Can I welcome you all to Gisborne Parish Church uh, for this all age service, both uh, those of you here in church and also those of you watching online from wherever you are. And if you're visiting, a special welcome. And can I wish you all a truly happy and healthy Christmas. So most fitting for Christmas Day, we begin with Isaac Watts' carol, Joy to the world, the Lord has come, let earth receive her king. Will you please stand? Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive the King. Let every heart Sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let songs be heard on high, while fields and streams and hills and plains. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sins and sorrows grow, no thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessing. Wherever guilt is found, wherever guilt is found, wherever, wherever guilt is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of Righteousness, the wonders of His love, the wonders of His love, the wonders of His love. Will you please be seated? In verse three, we sang, "He comes to make His blessings flow wherever guilt is found." And one fundamental result of Jesus coming that first Christmas was to die 
for the guilt of our sins, of going our way and not God's. So now when we admit the wrong we do, God forgives our sins for Jesus' sake. And of course it's so sensible to do what God wants and not sin, for he made us. And he knows what is best for us and what will lead to blessed, or as we would say, happy and fulfilled lives. He comes to make his blessings flow wherever guilt is found. So we pray the prayer of confession that is on your screens in church and at home, uh, saying sorry for the wrong we do and the good we fail to do. Together, almighty God. Almighty God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with all our heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. Have mercy upon us, cleanse us from our sins, and help us to overcome our faults. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the good news of Christmas Day is that if we trust in, in Jesus and obey him by his Holy Spirit, he is with us and will begin to strengthen us uh, for, for all goodness. For he is the long-promised one who is God with us, or in Hebrew, Emmanuel. So we sing, on Christmas Day, a humble girl gives birth to hope for all the world. This is Emmanuel. Please stand. Christmas Day, a humble girl gives birth to hope for all the world. This is Emmanuel. How awesome and mysterious the Lord of heaven draws near to us. This is Emmanuel. It's night from day, now feel it clutch a plane of hell, we see Majestic King and small and weak, the word of God has learned to speak.
And now Kira Hoare is going to read for us this morning's Bible reading. It's from John's Gospel, chapter 1 and verses 1 to 18. The Bible reading is from John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. For from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. Thank you, Kira, very much. So that reading tells us that the one who was once lying in a bed of straw had been in the beginning with God and his agent in the creation of this amazing universe of space and time. So please stand and sing our next carol, after which Ian Garrett was going to speak to us. And this carol refers to the bed of straw, seeing him lying on a bed of straw.
please do have a seat uh, and if any of you younger ones would like to um, come down and join me here uh, that would be great to have some company already absolutely well done you are first <laughs> And he's second, he's collapsed with the effort of that last Calypso carol. Um, and while people are, are making their way to join me down here at the front, can I say a very, very happy Christmas to you uh, indeed. And uh, to those of you who are joining us uh, on the live stream, especially those who can't but would like to have been here this morning, and especially happy Christmas to you as well. There are some, are those new roller skates by any chance? Did you unwrap those this morning? They look amazingly pink. Do you want to come up here so that maybe people could see them? Saz might be able to train the... Oh, I didn't think this is risky. Um, we, did, we didn't do a risk assessment. Look at those glorious pink roller skates. Fantastic. There we are. Do you, do you want to get carefully back down? Have you, have you mastered them yet? Shall I hold, shall hold a hand? No, you're fine. You're fine. Excellent. There we go. There we go. Welcome. Well, I don't know what your uh, favourite thing about Christmas is, uh, whether... <laughs> Sorry? Diet Coke. Diet Coke? <laughs> so, does that mean your dad only lets you have Diet Coke on one day a year? <laughs> it's the special Diet Coke year. I'll talk with him afterwards. Um, I don't know what your favourite Chris Christmas thing is, whether it's Diet Coke or the presents or the pudding or the turkey uh, or the trees, but for lots of people it's the games, isn't it? Like charades um, or Pictionary um, or what's the next one? I've forgotten. Kadoo. And those are all games where you're not allowed to use words. Um, and the thing about them, you have to try to tell people something without words. And so there is that, um, there is that uh, picture up there, uh, which is, is not a man with a new persistent cough, uh, it's a man with a, with a no speaking sign. So I thought that we would warm up by playing um, a few rounds of charades, and charades is where you have to act out something without using any words. So if you, if you know how to play charades, do you want to volunteer and, and come and, and... Who should we have first? Annie Rose, I think, why don't you come up? Okay, so... Annie Rose is going to act something out. You are her team, and actually the whole, the whole place can be your team, okay? And Annie Rose is going to act out a piece of Christmas music, all right? It might be a carol, it might be a song. Okay, here we go. You got that? Okay, go for it. Oh, look at that. They got it. Away in a manger. Okay, down you go. Well done. I thought the biggest clue was behind you, but you were very good not to use that. Um, okay, another volunteer? Who'd like, to do, who'd like to do one? Yes, do you, want, do you want to come and do one? I love the outfit. Now, you are Freya, is that right? Priya. Priya. Sorry, I got that wrong. Can you do... Oh, I've got my microphone on. You'll need to... <laughs> I, could, I could act it to you. Can you do Silent Night? <laughs> Shall I help you? How many words? Should we do two words? Two words. Two words. That's good. First word. Let's do this. Can you do that? First word. Oh, there we go. Got it. Thanks, Priya. Brilliant. Okay, another another one. Yes, do you want to do you want to come do you want to come do one? Uh, which one? Which one should we do of of these? Okay, here we go. What's your name? Sorry, I don't know. Imogen. Okay, can you do that one? Do you think? Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, oh yes, little donkey. There is. There is, definitely, there is definitely some good telepathy going on uh, in the congregation this morning. So charades, it reminds you how important words are and that when people don't tell you things, you're left wondering, you know, what is going on in their minds? What are they thinking? And lots of people reckon that it's like that with God. They reckon that God 
hasn't told us anything about himself. And so lots of people think like this. They, they, they think, well, is God really there? And if he is, um, what is he like? And anyway, how do we know? And today's Bible reading uh, that Kira read for us earlier, it says Christmas answers all of those questions because it says that Jesus was God's word come into the world to answer those questions for us. So before we look at it, let's pray. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father God, thank you for sending your son into the world that first Christmas. Please help us to see how Jesus answers our questions about you. Amen. So if you look up on the screens, here is John chapter 1 and verse 1, and it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So when John started writing his gospel, he sat down and he thought to himself, you know, I could begin it like this. In the beginning was God's Son, and he came into the world that first Christmas time, but he said, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to give him a code name, just like James Bond is 007. I'm going to give God's son a code name, and I'm going to give him the code name, the Word. And that's because when God's son came into the world that first Christmas, it was the most important way ever that God has spoken to us. And in verse 1, if you look at it up here, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And so it says, the word was right there back in the beginning before anything around us was even here. And the word was with God, and this is the mind-blowing thing, the word was fully God himself. In other words, he was always there, as far back as you can go. And that's pretty mind-blowing, because let's think about how far back you and I go. So I need... I need a volunteer who's 10 years old. Is anyone, is anyone 10 years old? Oh, maybe I'm, maybe I'm stuck for... Maybe. Nine, you'll do. Thomas, you, it's Thomas, isn't it? You'll do. You'll do. We'll, okay, and I need one, one more volunteer as well. Any age at all who, 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 who hasn't come up. Do you, want, do you want to come with us? That's brilliant. So Thomas, I know. I can't do your name. Who are you? Royal. What a great name. Respect. Um, okay, Thomas. Uh, now, you're, yeah, you're the one who needs to be here. Royal, if you come, if you come here, okay, could you, hold, could you just stand like that and hold that for us? Hold, hold the ends of it like that. Okay, so Thomas is not yet 10. We're, get, we're just going to need to clear a pathway here, okay? So this roll of paper, Thomas, this, we're going to pretend that this is the role of your life, okay? So uh, we'll forget the 10, because uh, we couldn't get a 10. But can you, can, you hold it? can you hold it there and there, okay? And then can you start walking back this way? Does that make sense? Okay, so nine, that's, that's, that's the real Thomas. You stay there, Royal. Thank you. Eight, seven, six, five, four. Were any of these your favorite years? Oh, hold on, birthday. Let's, let's hold it there. So there is, there, is, there is birthday. And then, what's your birthday? 2nd of March. Coming up. And then there's a little bit before your birthday. Do you want to keep unrolling that until we get right to the end? What do you think that bit is? When I wasn't here. When you weren't here, where were you? Ah, well, the nowhere bit is, is from here onwards. What do you think this bit was before your birthday when you were actually here? I have no idea. <laughs> it was when you were in your mummy's tummy. I think that, yeah, 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 I think that's what that's supposed to be. And so we made it blue because that's to represent you swimming around in a nice, warm, kind of uh, enjoyable thing. So that's the role of your life. Do you want to roll that back up to, to, towards Royal? Thank you very much indeed. Um, there we go, and I'm going to make my way back to the front. So that's what it looks like with one of us, that actually the roll goes back, and then it stops. And what we're going to do next is uh, this roll, we're going to imagine this roll stands for Jesus, the son of God's life. Okay? So... No, you don't have to do it again. What I'm going to do is to get people to give you a round of applause and then get two more volunteers. Thank you both. 
Okay, that's lovely. I'll, I'll go, Andy, Andy will grab it. Royal, why don't you sit down? Um, we, we, still need the, um, we still need the gangway here. So can I have two more volunteers to do the same with... Why don't you come, why don't you come out? Royal, do you want to sit... You, you, you had not sit back down again. <laughs> why, don't, why, don't you come, uh, why don't you come out? And Jake, why don't you come out? How's that? Um, are you Royal's brother by any chance? You are. And what's your name? Sarit. Say again. Sarit. 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 Okay, I've got it right this time. Right, Jake, do you want to be the walker? Okay. Sarit, would you kindly hold that here? So this is the role of Jesus, the Son of God. Okay, have you, have you got that, Jake? Do you want to take it? If you kind of take it by both ends and start unwrapping. So you just keep going back, Jake. Um, so as far as we know, Jesus was about 33 when he died for us on the cross and rose again. 32, 31, 30, as far as we know, that's where he began his ministry. And then the Gospels don't tell us anything more about Jesus. Whoa. Until, until, just wait there, Jake, until we get to 12. That's the only thing we know about Jesus between when he was born and when his public ministry began, that his family thought that he got lost in Jerusalem. That's in Luke's gospel. Keep going. You're doing, you're doing brilliantly. Five, four, three, two, one, and just hold it there. Whoa! There we go. Let's show the camera. Is, can we see, the, see that on the camera? We, we are now at Christmas. Okay. And then we get that mystery little blue bit again, uh, which is Jesus swimming around in his mummy's tummy. But the difference is that Jesus' role doesn't end there because actually the person that Mary gave birth to was there forever before he was ever growing inside her tummy. So we've got this great big word forever, which of course I should have put the other way up for the sake of the camera. <laughs> Note to self for next time. And then Jake, if you, if you just keep going all the way to the back, okay? And if Jake was to take that through the wall, uh, through the RGS, along the A69, across the Lake District, it still wouldn't be long enough to stand for the beginning of the Son of God's life because there wasn't a beginning. So the furthest we can go, Jake, is the resources, um, the resources area. And what you'll find there on, on the chair, I wonder if you could bring that to the front for us. Okay? So we'll both make it back to the front. Whoa. A little bit of Christmas Day exercise. Is always good. Thank you so much, Sarid. Why don't you sit down again? Um, and this is a bit like Bake Off, where I've got people just to clear up the mess um, for me. Jake, could you bring the crown for us to the front, please? Well done. Don't worry about running up over the, um, over the paper. Brilliant. Great stuff. Thank you both. Thank you, Sarid and Jake. So let's put this up here. Let's put this up here. And I want you to imagine that that, that crown stands for God and his word. And uh, if we uh, look at uh, John chapter 1, verse 1, uh, again, uh, up on the screen, we'll see that it says, In the beginning, in the beginning, Way back before the universe was ever here, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then John says this, look up this on the screens. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. So John is saying the Word, the word became one of us. And he was born as a baby, and he was laid in that manger that first Christmas time. And there are three things that words do for us that Jesus has done for us. And here's the first thing. Words tell us that people are there. So, for example, I'm not sure that I've seen the Mathers family this morning. Um, but if we get them to speak, we'll know that they're here. So what I want you to do, on the count of three, I want you to shout as loudly as you can, Mathers, are you here? Okay? Does that make sense? Here we go. One, two, three. Mathers, are you here? We're here! You see, words tell you, words tell you that people are here. Let's, let's do that one more time. I've definitely not seen the greens yet this morning, so we just need to check they're not being naughty. All right, so the same thing on the count of three. One, two, three. Greens, are you here? Ready? One, two, three. 
Greens, are you here? Happy Christmas, Ian. Oh, they are. They are. There you go. Words tell us that people are there. And Jesus was God's word coming to the world to tell us that God is really there. So do you remember that first question that people wonder about? They wonder, um, is God really there? If you go on to the, um, the next uh, slide. Um, so there we are. That's it. Thank you. Some, some people say, is God really there? And, and some people say, well, no, he's not. So if you look at this next picture... Hello, that's, that's, that's the one we're after. If you look at this next picture, there's lots of people who would say, no, God isn't there. God is nowhere. You can cross God out of the picture. Um, he's not there at all. But if you had been there that first Christmas and you'd known who Jesus really was, then you'd have been able to say to people, if you watch the screen, spot the difference. It's not true that God is nowhere. Have a look at this. You could have said, what's true is that God is now here. That God has spoken to us in Jesus. And if you're still wondering about whether, whether that's true, whether that's believable, we're giving away a great little book uh, or booklet uh, this Christmas. Very small, very thin. It's called, Is Christmas Unbelievable? And you'd be really welcome to take one of those away if you're still just thinking what you make of all this. So the first thing that words do is to tell us that people are really there, and Jesus was God's word to tell us that God is really there. The second thing that words do is that words tell us what people are like. So for example, I only have to start speaking for you to tell what I'm like. For example, I'm not a Geordie, I'm a soft southerner. And I only have to get all of you to start speaking to start finding out what you're like. For example, on the very biggest question of the day, namely... Brussels sprouts. Um, those of you who were at Family Carols yesterday will know that we had Brussels sprouts man uh, with us yesterday. And I'm quite glad he's not here today because he might be upset by this bit because I want to find out whether you love them or hate them. Okay, so on the count of three, would you please shout yes if you love Brussels sprouts? Okay, one, two, three. Yes! That surprised me. Um, <laughs> and again, on the count of three, uh, if you hate them, would you shout no? So, one, two, three. No! Mm, I, think that, I think that was a draw, probably. But the, the point is, I'm not, I'm not going to adjudicate that one. Um, the point is, words tell us what people are like, don't they? And Jesus was God's word to tell us what God is like. Now, sadly, the other day, someone said to me that they, they often think of God as like this emoji. If you go on to the, um, the next one, that's it. They often think of God as like this emoji. They think that God is angry. Because obviously he sees what we do wrong and he has to take that seriously. But then you might, you might get somebody else who thinks the exact opposite, who thinks that God is like this emoji, that, that he's happy with everything we do because after all he's a God of love, so won't he put up with everything? Well, listen to John 1 verse 14 again. The word became flesh and dwelt among us and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. So glory is just the Bible word for what God is really like. And John says we've seen that in Jesus because Jesus wasn't just like God. Jesus was God and is God. And John says that what we've seen in Jesus is that God is full of grace. And grace, that's the kind of love you have to show to people when they ignore you and hurt you, but you still love them. Uh, grace is the kind of love that has to forgive again and again and again. And in Jesus, we've seen that God is like that, full of grace, because we've all ignored and hurt him, haven't we? And yet, in his love, he's made a way for us to be forgiven and yet, which shows how seriously he takes what we do wrong. And that way was Jesus dying on the cross, taking the judgment that we deserve so that we could be forgiven. And that's the number one reason why God's son became one of us that Christmas time. So I just need one last volunteer, if I may. Um, Katie, it's got to be you, because if you're going to be deprived of Diet Coke, I feel I've got I've to make up for that. Katie, in here is not only... 
um, this that stands for the Lord Jesus. There's something else hidden in there. Could you dig it out for us, please? Thank you. Whoa! whoa. <laughs> <laughs> if you give that instruction, you can expect... Thank you very much. I thought you were about to throw that at me. Thank you. Let's, let's unfold it. Let's unfold it. And does it need to go the other way up? What do you think this is? Cross. The cross. Okay, you just hold it there a moment. And let me just put this up here. And then, thank you so much, Katie. And then we will stick this cross up there. Great, thank you, Katie. Do you want to sit down again? And happy Christmas to you as well. So that's to remind us that as Jesus' life unfolded, all the time he knew that he was heading to the cross out of love for us. So I think maybe this up on the screen is the emoji that we should have for God. So the crown says, yes, he is the king. And he must take seriously what we do wrong. But he's got a heart of love, and that led him to pay for our forgiveness on the cross. That's what God is like, and Jesus tells us that. So words, they tell us that people are there, they tell us what people are like, and then very quickly, words bring people together. So do you know, on the um, 24th of February, 2007, I was standing here next to a wonderful girl called Tess, and we each said just two words to the other. What do you think those words were? Hi, your name. It wasn't hi, your name. <laughs> hi, Tess. Hi, Ian. It had got a bit more serious than that, but that's a, very good, that's a very good guess. Shall I tell you what we said to one another? I will. I will love you for the rest of my life. And that brought us together for the whole of our lives. And what Jesus did was even bigger than that, because Jesus is God's word to bring us together with him forever. Because... When God sent his son to die for us on the cross, it was God's way of saying, I will. I will forgive you and have you back in friendship with me, and I will keep loving and forgiving you until I finally take you to be with me in heaven. So that is what God has said to us through Jesus, his word, that first Christmas. He said, I'm really here. I am loving and forgiving, and I want you back in the friendship with me that you were made for. But like with every Christmas gift, the question is, do we want it as well? Let's pray. Father God, thank you that you gave your son to be your word to us. Please help us to believe what you've told us through him. Help us to believe that you're there, even though we can't see you. And help us to believe that you are loving and forgiving, even though we don't deserve that. In Jesus' name, amen. Great, thank you so much for keeping me company up here. Why don't you head back um, to the grown-ups that you are with this morning. And we are going to sing again about how Jesus' birthday was the day that history has longed for. Let's stand and sing.
can we in a moment we're going to stand and we're going to have an opportunity to remind ourselves as we imply in the creed that what we've been singing about and hearing about is not poetic myth but is historical reality jesus was born of the virgin mary he suffered under pontius pilate a roman procurator whom we can date and on the third day he rose again then at the end of history he will come again to judge so if we can we say together uh, the apostles creed will you please stand i believe in god i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth i believe in jesus christ his only son our lord he was conceived by the power of the holy spirit and born of the virgin mary he suffered under pontius pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended to the dead on the third day he rose again he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father he will come again to judge the living and the dead i believe in the holy spirit the holy catholic church the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting amen will you please be seated and we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Let's try to think about the phrases as we say this so familiar prayer to many of us. There on the your screens. Our Father in heaven. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I know we pray the collect or the special prayer for Christmas Day. Almighty God, you have given us your only begotten Son, to take our nature upon him, and as at this time to be born of a pure virgin, grant that we who have been born again and made your children by adoption and grace may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen and a prayer for faith in Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will strengthen faith in Jesus Christ this Christmas. We pray that for our leaders in both church and state, and also for ourselves. Help some of us to begin to believe in Jesus as the Savior who is Christ, the risen Lord. Help other of us, other, others of us to recover a faith that has faltered or to go on from faith to faith. And may each of us this Christmas know more of your love, of the salvation you offer in Jesus Christ and of the presence and power of your Holy Spirit. So in a world where there is much darkness, please strengthen us all to shine more and more with the light of Christ. We ask this for his name's sake. Amen. And a prayer for those who suffer or are particularly sad this Christmas. Perhaps we can have in mind individuals known to us personally. We commend your fatherly goodness, all who are anxious or distressed in mind or body, especially those in war-torn areas of the world or suffering natural disasters at this Christmas time. Comfort and relieve them in their need. Give them patience in their sufferings and bring good out of their troubles. We pray this for Jesus' sake. Amen. 
And at this time of year, we pray for the work of AID and Anglican International Development and Tier Fund. Heavenly Father, may those of us in developed nations be generous. May our governments be fair. May those who administer relief and plan development be wise. And may the needy of the world be helped by the work of these Christian organizations for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And finally, a moment of silent prayer for ourselves, our families or friends this Christmas. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now for our final carol, O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Please stand. Oh, come let us 
Just a few notices before a final prayer. Uh, can I say with regard to services at the church, there's a short service of Holy Communion immediately after this service. So uh, those staying need to make their way to the choir stalls and the rest of us. If we want to talk to our friends, can we do that as much as possible uh, outside for health and uh, noise reasons? Tomorrow, Sunday the 26th, there's no 9.15 service, but the regular 11 o'clock service and the regular 6.30 service is, uh, are, are taking place, but without streaming. As at all services, sadly, masks are mandatory, and if we can, it's helpful to take lateral flow tests. Uh, and tomorrow, there will be a, a combined crash, yes, but no scramblers uh, or holiday kids in the morning. On Friday the 31st, there's a watch night service at 11.30 p.m. in person only, and Sunday the 2nd of Jan, back to more normal routines. But see details in Ramsey Adcock's letter sent out for Friday, or go to the church website, jpc.org.uk. And uh, those of us in the building can look at the uh, service sheet we've given, uh, for, been, been given for more information. Two other things. One, if you're not yet committed as a Christian, we run regular groups for people with questions, and a new group is starting uh, in January, three sessions, long entitled uh, uh, Hope Explored. Uh, they begin on the 17th of Jan, uh, online and in person. Details are on the church website. Or perhaps, uh, Ian's referred to this, you wonder about the historical evidence for the events of the first Christmas. If so, you will find helpful, as he was suggesting, a short booklet called Is Christmas Unbelievable? And uh, we want you to read it, but if you will read it, we would like to give you a free copy. And for people who have questions about the virginal conception of Jesus, there's a leaflet. And both are in baskets at the exit uh, for you to take. And two, we always at Christmas like to give to support international Christian relief work uh, through aid and uh, tear fund. And you can place gifts in the yellow buckets by the exits, or you can make a donation online at church websites. And finally, there is for everyone, I understand, a small gift packet, including something edible, the sidesmen want to give you as you leave. So let's now close with a final prayer. And together we say, be with us, Lord. Be with us, Lord, as we go out into the world. May the lips that have sung your praises always speak the truth. May the ears that have heard your word only listen only to what is good. And may our lives and our worship be always pleasing in your sight for the glory of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so may Christ, the Son of God, born of Mary, fill you with his grace to trust his promises and obey his will and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.